Hey, this is Math 7, Unit 2, Lesson 14, with four, call four representations. And so we're going to be talking about, it says contrast relationships that are, are and are not proportional in four different ways. And begin, first of all, with a little picture like this. Mine's in black and white, sorry about that, where you had blue blocks and yellow blocks. And you just had a conversation in your class about which group of blocks would be the bluest group of blocks. There's different ways of thinking about that. And maybe you're thinking about which one you know has more besides you know might cancel out. For example, like you said, this cancels out. That has two. Cancel that has one. That has two. One. And this has three. You might say, oh, this one is the bluest maybe because it has the most just blue left over than the other one. Maybe you set it up as a as a as a ratio or as a fraction of uh, blue to blue to yellow. You know, if I did blue to yellow, this guy here is a three to one. This one here is a five to two. Okay, so in some ways I could say this is like a two and a half and that one ends up being a three. So this one's a greater value there. Either way, for the most part, we'd probably all agree that those two are our best choices in terms of having the most blue comparatively. Okay, and if I did it as a, as a fraction of sort, if I did it blue to yellow, and I did three over one, five over two, here's three over two, here's four over two, which is also two, and four over three. And if I wanted to group those from least blue to greatest blue, and having A as my greatest at three, and D at my second at 2.5, I notice C is here at two, and I have three and a half is 1.5, and four and a third is 1.33, so we would say B is next at 1.5 and E is our least at 1.3. Now that's if you did this blue to yellow ratio. If you did it a different way, if you did yellow to blue or something like that, or if you just said, okay, how many are left over? We have a three, we have a two and a two, and a one and a one, you might have gone something a little different. You might have said, well, let's go with D. Oops, sorry. You might say, let's do D. And then you might have chosen between A and C somehow, A, C, I don't know how you would pick between those really. And then maybe between E and B and maybe done E and B that way and flip those around. Doesn't really matter, not a big deal. It's just more about you looking and making a decision about what you think is gonna work and rationalizing that through and talking it through a little bit. You had another situation here where you had one scenario on four representations where you were selecting from a list of things to make a situation where you can create a proportional relationship between quantities. Maybe it is something like centipedes and the number of legs in a centipede. Those could have a proportional relationship and you can make a nice graph that would work, okay? But maybe there are things in the list that you can make a relationship that is proportional, so that they're connected, they have a relationship, but they're not proportional. So for example, if I did a, a thing about uh, dinosaurs, okay, and talked about how many um, metric tons a dinosaur might weigh, okay, that would only work probably if I'm talking about a specific type of dinosaur, but there are lots of dinosaurs. So there is a relationship with dinosaurs and weight, but it may not be a proportional relationship because dinosaurs could all be different sizes, shapes, ages, that's just not gonna quite work out where we say, oh, all dinosaurs are this. It's not gonna be a straight line, okay? Then you had an opportunity with your classmate where you had a little piece of paper and we called it one scenario, four representations. And for that, you were describing a relationship in detail and you were making some sketches, just some graphs, making tables. So hopefully you had a time to do that with your classmates there, okay? So today, my little bit of real quick summary here. And we're talking overall about this constant proportionality, proportional relationship can, can often be easily identified on a graph table and equation that represents it. So here's an example. Constant proportionality is what we're talking about here. It's something that you can obviously see on a graph. You can find it as the y when you're looking at y and x. If we divide 7 over 4, we find it there. If we look on a table, we can find it there. And that's an important number for us to, to use because it helps us decide which other points are going to be on the line. The point here is that some relationships are not always proportional, okay? If it's proportional, if it's gonna be proportional, we're gonna say again and again, you're gonna have a straight line. It's gonna go through the origin, okay? And you'll, you will have a y equals kx type of equation. And that will be the things that tell you that it's a proportional relationship as we've been talking about there. So let's take a look at tonight's homework here.
It says we have the equation C equals 2.95 G, so that is our Y equals KX form. This shows how much gas you can buy at a gas station on a certain day. In the equation, C is cost and G is gallons per Write down at least four pairs that could fit this relationship. Okay, so if we're gonna write down four pairs that can fit it, I did it this way. I said, well, let's do 2.95 times one, 2.95 times two. This is our cost times one gallon of gas, our cost times three gallons of gas, and our cost times four gallons of gas. And when we do that, just doing some math there, we get 295, we get 590, I get 885, and I get 1180. So as a table, if I did cost in gallons, um, actually be gallons, oops, sorry about that. If I do gallons here, and my cost, if I did one gallon, two gallon, three gallon, four gallons, one gallon is 295, two gallons is 590, three gallons is 885, and four gallons is 1180. Okay, so that's my little graph there of gallons to cost, no problem. If I created a graph of that, again, I could go like this. We could say that my, my bottom value here is my gallons, and I have one, two, three, four. My cost value is gonna be going up to 12, so I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's 12, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So at one, one gallon, I'm spending about $2.95, about $3 there, almost $3. Two is almost at $6, so about there. Three is about almost $9, so about there. And then we said four is uh, almost $12, so about there. Okay, not perfect, not great, but I should get a line, something like that, when it's all said and done. Okay, so $2.95 represents my constant proportionality, right? My K value, my constant uh, proportionality. It represents how much one one gallon of, ga of gas is going to cost, $2.95. Okay? In D, it says Jada's mom remarks, you can get about a third of a gallon of gas for a dollar. Is she correct? No, she says you can get about a third. About a third of a gallon. Okay? Well, we're getting for three dollars, we're getting one gallon, right? So a third of that. Okay, a third of that. What is one third, one third of a dollar, of three dollars? One third of three dollars is gonna be a dollar because it's a dollar plus a dollar plus a dollar. So we're doing one third of that is one dollar. So for one dollar, I can get a gallon of gas, okay? So can I get a third of a gallon of gas? Yep, a third of a gallon gives me a third of a dollar, a third of three dollars, which is one, gives me a third of a gallon, which is gonna be that one there. Okay, so I could take that, it's almost like a scale factor thing, right? It's one third times three, and one third times one, and you end up with one equals one third, okay? It's applying a little scale factor thing to what we did before, to this, this one, sorry. Okay, next one. It says there's a proportional relationship between the volume measured in cups and the same volume measured in tablespoons, three cups equivalent to four ta 45, 48 tablespoons as shown in the graph right there. There's our graph right there. There's our three to 48. It says plot and label at least two more points that represent this relationship, okay? Well, we can look at that there. So we're saying we have a relationship here between cups, all right? We have cups and we have tablespoons. And so far what we know is we have three and we have 48. Knowing that I have three and 48, can I make a, a Y over K value? Sure, 48 over three is gonna become six. What, six? Nope, sorry, 16. <laughs> 16, sorry about that. There are 16 threes inside of that, so it's 16 over one. So one value could be one and 16. So at one, I'm at 12, 14, 16. I'm right there at 16. Knowing that, I can do two. We double 16 becomes 32, and I can be 2 and 32, and there I am right there. So there's two more points there that go with that line. So I use a straight edge to draw a line that represents this proportional relationship. So we're starting at the origin, and we're going to go through all those dots right there. 
something like this and that becomes my graph that we're talking about okay for which value y is 1 comma y on the line we would say that's going to be at point 16 right there and our constant proportionality is going to be this one so k equals 16 is our constant proportionality all right that's all we have for this one. I guess if you want to write an equation real quick, I don't know if that was a question. Oh, yeah, it's E, this one here, E. To write that equation, we would say we're going to take our Y value, which is T, equals our K value, which is 16, times our X value, which is C. And that becomes our equation for this equation right there. All right, that is about it. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.